Thank you everyone for joining. The webinar will start in five minutes. Thanks again for taking the time to join us today as we will be discussing the integration of Sentu Cloud with BIMTRAC, the winning combination for QA, QC in the AEC industry. As a reminder, this webinar will be recorded and posted to our website to view later or to share with others. If you have questions, please type them into the Q&A or we will answer them at the end of the presentation. So now let's discuss today's agenda. First, we will have Dominique Pulikin, who is the CEO of Sintu US, who will give you a high level overview of Sintu. Next, we will have Carl Storms, who is the technical solutions lead at BIMTRAC, who will give us an overview of the BIMTRAC platform. Next, we will have myself, Rob Rasnick, who is the sales director of Sintu North America, and I will give an overview of the BIMTRAC Sintu integration and workflow. And lastly, we will follow up with a Q&A. So now I would like to turn it over to Dominique Pulikin, who will give us an overview of Sintu. Take it away, Dominique. Thanks, Rob, uh, for this introduction. Uh, my name is uh, Dominique Pulikin, in charge of uh, product management and uh, business development for Sintu. Sintu is at the convergence of digital twins and reality capture. Our product is called Sintu Cloud. Sintu Cloud will make your laser scan data fully cloud compatible, whatever the size of this data is. By becoming cloud compatible, your terrestrial laser scan become shareable, distributable. You can view them in a web browser from any time, at, from anywhere at any time. And uh, of course, you can enrich that with measurements, annotations. They become then BIM compatible because BIM is all about collaboration. Sintu Cloud runs on Amazon Web Services on Microsoft Azure, and the user can even select the, the region where he will host his data in Sintu Cloud for every single project. Sintu Cloud uh, uh, leverage a very unique uh, technology that has been developed over the, over the last 15 years. We can turn each 3D point cloud into very, a very high resolution 3D mesh. Uh, this 3D mesh will be highly streamable in a web browser, the same way Netflix will stream high resolution movies in a, in a browser as well. And by doing this point cloud to mesh uh, transformation, we will make the data 10 to 20 times smaller. So everything we upload it to the cloud will be 10 to, 20, 10 to 20 times smaller in size and will be fully mesh based. The very unique capacity we have as well is to be able to bring back this surface mesh into the source point cloud and get then your data in, the, in their original form if you want to use uh, this point cloud in uh, software like Revit or uh, uh, Navisworks or AutoCAD. Sinto Cloud addresses various uh, digital twin industries such as AEC, uh, uh, energy and oil and gas, manufacturing, uh, vertical infrastructure like bridges, tunnels, runabouts, Sinto Cloud is a device agnostic platform for your asset management and for your scan on BIM or scan on CAD data. It's all about collaboration, uh, visualization. You can enrich the data with measurements, annotations, issues, notes, private notes. You can distribute the data and uh, bring back the data into the desktop world. We can also leverage cloud computing on AI to extract meaningful information uh, from your laser scan data. We've been in business for more than a year now. We have uh, more than 100 companies uh, using Sintu Cloud worldwide in AEC, uh, manufacturing and oil and gas. They have uploaded more than 400,000 scans so far to the platform. So the, the workflow for using Sintu Cloud is the following. We will take your laser scan data after registration using a structure RCP E57 or FLS uh, file formats. And we will run locally on this computer uh, the Sintu Connect uh, Windows app that will make this point cloud to mesh transformation. So everything uploaded to the cloud will be mesh based for, for streaming. And if you, uh, we can also connect a Sintu Cloud to BIM 360 
with the goal to uh, uh, to pull uh, uh, 3D data BIM models like IFC, RVT, uh, Navisworks models, or 3D DWG, and now 2D DWG as well, and uh, overlay this uh, BIM information over the scanned data in our viewer. The goal, of course, is to extract uh, uh, meaningful information from this uh, visual analysis by, by comparing the scans to the BIM model, but I will leave this part to the, to the next demo. Uh, when we distribute the data back in the office world, this could be as a unified mesh in OBJ, STL, or FBX. We can also do this mesh to point cloud transformation and bring back the, the data in its original form, either as a unified or structured point cloud. We can, of course, uh, create BCFs, PTFs, and XLS. Uh, various uh, data can be extracted from, uh, from the scans or from, uh, from the platform. Connecting to BIMTrack is all, all about syncing issues and nodes uh, between the two platforms, but I will leave this part to the, to the next demo. And uh, as you understand, Sinto Cloud is all about streaming data in a, via the WebGL browser. So we can stream data on desktop and laptops, but now as well on, uh, on tablets. And we, we can also stream data in a VR headset, leveraging WebVR as a platform. So let me uh, switch now uh, to a quick demo of the platform. So uh, here I'm using uh, Google Chrome as a web browser. You can also use uh, any other WebGL browser like Mozilla Firefox or Microsoft Edge v79. Uh, so let me sign in. Uh, the first thing you would see is your dashboard uh, where you see the latest uh, and recent activities uh, on your various projects. So this is my list of projects to which I have access to. Uh, so uh, you can view them as thumbnails here or on a list here or even on a map here. Okay, uh, let me go back to the thumbnail view here. Uh, you did, this also, this is the admin uh, table. So if you are an account manager, you can also see your plan here. So I have a capacity of 10,000 scans now that is, that is spread over multiple projects. Uh, I can also uh, use these uh, admin tools to uh, set uh, project managers or to invite co-admins, uh, etc. So uh, this is where so I have my list of users. So this is my directory of users. On those users, uh, when you invite them to a project, they will be assigned a, their a role. Okay, uh, on each role comes with certain uh, permissions. Uh, so these are the predefined pre list of permissions for every single, uh, every one of those five roles that have been predefined by us. Uh, like uh, a BIM manager can uh, upload, the download data, uh, delete or restore projects, uh, create work zones, etc. Uh, a viewer only may only view the data, make measurements, or create annotations. And you can also define your custom roles if you are not, if you don't have enough with those presets. Uh, okay, so when I go to my projects now, what I will see, let me go, for example, uh, to this uh, project. So this is a project that has been uploaded with uh, 56 scans or stations or setups. Uh, you can see them all here. This was a RCP project that has been uploaded. Could be again, it could be a structure E57 or a structure FLS as well. Uh, so, this is one scan uh, for which you can see uh, the high resolution picture here. But to see the technology in action, what I will do, I will really go into Play 3D here, and that will go to the 3D view. That will take me to the 3D view where I will be in this exact scan location. And this is what you start looking at, is a 2D picture, a very typical 2D panoramic picture for laser scanners. Uh, but now what we did, we created a 3D model as well. So when I go from 2D panoramic to 3D RGB, basically you see the same, except where there is no point cloud data, like in the sky. Okay, and when I remove the color from this 3D model, I go to the surface mode. And this is really where the technology shines because you know this uh, 3D uh, surface mode will really show you every single detail that has been captured by the laser beam. Okay, 
I can, of course, switch to the 3D navigation, okay, not be in a scanned position. Here I also have various uh, uh, display settings, 3D RGB is one way to go, but also you can go to X-ray vision mode. In X-ray vision mode, you really see through the walls and you have a good understanding of your project on the scan layout, okay? Now again, to see the technology in action, what I will go is go to this uh, exact scan position where I will be streaming this very high resolution mesh, okay? And typically, this is what may happen with your scan. So if I go either to a 3D RGB or 2D panoramic view, you'll see you have this kind of uh, uh, overexposures or underexposures. So you don't see much, but when you switch to the 3D surface, you really see what has been captured by the laser beam, okay? Until you get the finest level of detail, and then you can see a lot of details, like even cracks in the concrete or every surface detail that has been captured by the laser beam. So let me show you when you, when you click to the next scan position here, you see the streaming happening. Let me zoom out a little bit until you get the finest level of detail and you see the quality of the mesh we do produce with this technology. Okay, and so this is a perfect view to take, uh, to make any, some measurements, for example, okay, I can measure uh, using this measurement tool, I will uh, make a measurement from, from, uh, from here, for example, to uh, whatever, to here, okay, and you see the uh, length here, the X, Y, Z, and the angle here, you can save this measurement, it will be saved with the context, uh, so whoever will click on, on this one will always see the exact same viewpoint. I can also use this view to make annotation. An annotation can be a, a note, a private note or an issue, okay? It's an issue, uh, then you give it a title, okay, this needs to be checked. You can add labels as well, uh, and as many labels as you want, then it's an issue, so you need to add a severity parameter, like, okay, this will be a critical issue. Uh, there is a due date, and you can add text, photo, video, uh, URLs, PDFs here in the comment. And you need to assign it to a team member, okay? Uh, and I validate this, and then I create the annotation. So this person will receive an email, will be notified by email that there is an issue that he needs to look at, okay? Uh, so this is really uh, the core technology in action. I don't want to spend too much time here, but let me show you another project uh, for which we not only have uh, the scanned data, but also a BIM model. Uh, okay, like this one, thank you to uh, AGP in France that took, uh, gave us access to this very nice project. So in this case, uh, we also organize the scans per level. You see, uh, there is this capacity in the, this platform to assign your various scans to various work zones or say folders or subfolders on each can is uh, has been assigned here to a, to a certain level, okay? Uh, now what we did to upload a model to the platform, uh, there's two ways to go. Either you upload IFCs from your disk or you connect to BIM360 in order to pull a Revit model, a Navisworks model or a Dodi or 3D DWG model. So when I go into the 3D view now that I have both scans on BIM, I go to the 3D view and what I will see here is uh, the BIM model appearing first and then the scan data being streamed. So this is a scan and BIM now in my viewer. Okay, when I go, uh, and of course this has, they both have been aligned previously using probably the same survey, uh, survey uh, points. If, they are not, if, if the, the, the BIM model is not aligned to the scan data or the scan data is not aligned to the uh, BIM model, there is a tool here to do this uh, alignment manually. So you can do this manually by using this tool, but uh, this I will not do that today. We don't have time for that. But let me show you uh, what, it, what you may want to do now that you have a scan on BIM in the same, uh, in the same viewer. So this is from a a vantage point here, uh, you can switch to the next vantage point here. So this is the exact information mixing the as-built as -built data coming from the laser scanner to the BIM model. What you want to do here is compare and look for issues. So you click on the comparison tool, you say, okay, I want to compare all my scans to all my models. 
On here, you have two tools. The first one is called the Visual Div tool. If I click on this one, I will automatically create a heat map that I can adjust here that will show me everything different between the scan and the BIM. So see, everything in red is data that has been captured by the scanner, which is not in the BIM model. Of course, all those scaffoldings, equipment, something like that. Let me show you an example here uh, where you see you have uh, this big red wall here. And say, okay, you may find an issue here. So what you do, you go to the visual check tool and then you can play with the transparency level. So you say, okay, this is my scan data. So this is the as-built information turned into a very high resolution mesh. Okay. And then when I move my uh, cursor to the right, this is a BIM model from the exact same viewpoint. Okay. So you see here, there's a big issue because one of these uh, existing walls has not been, has not been modeled uh, in the scan to be processed. So it may be an issue. In which case, what I will do, I will create an issue here. Say, okay, this is an issue. This needs to be added to the BIM model, let's say. I uh, say, okay, uh, call it a, a wall a label. Uh, and you may add other labels, severity, very high, due date next week, and uh, assign it to myself. Okay. Okay. And this is exactly the information that will be pushed or synced to BIM track, but I will leave this part. Uh, to my colleague Rob in the next presentation. Now I think it's time to uh, learn more about BIMTRAC and I leave it to, uh, to you, Carl, for the next demo. Thanks, Dominic. As Dominic mentioned, my name is Carl Storms, Technical Solutions Lead from BIMTRAC. I'm an architectural technologist by trade and have been in the industry for over 20 years. Always a little awkward to talk about yourself and these things, so I have this slide that I let do the talking for me. But really enough about me, let's take a look at BIMTRAC. As you can see from this slide, BIMTRAC truly is a global product that's used all around the world. Here are some of our customers that are using the product now. Why do they find it such a great platform? Well, really it comes down to some of the challenges that we all face in the AAC industry when we're working with the collaboration process. So whether it's dealing with people spread all around the world, dealing with different file formats, emails, silos where our data is kept, uh, all these things that lead to perhaps an issue on site like this silly one we see in the screen with a column really where it shouldn't be. The goal of BIMTRAC is to prevent these things from happening. So when we're working in that coordination process, there can be a variety of issues that can commonly be raised during that coordination process. Uh, think of it as maybe clashes, errors in emissions, maybe somebody requests an RFI, defects, maybe we're even doing a job site walkthrough and we happen to notice something that we need to report back to the team. Even if we're doing data validation or we're talking about something that needs to be replaced, we're moving into the operations and maintenance part of a project. BIMTRAC wants to take all of these things from design to construction through to maintenance and operation and handle them all in one platform. However, the current workflow where everything's a little bit scattered, everything's around, doesn't lend itself to that. So we've got our BIM manager coordinator, VDC coordinator, using something like Navisworks to pull all these multidisciplinary federated models together. And then they start validating the information, whether it's through clash detection reports or just viewing the models. Once they find that, they need to find a way of transmitting all of that design coordination around to the other people that need to address, or I should say need to address those problems. So naturally this leads to a bunch of back and forth communication between the engineers and the architects saying, we are working on this, well, you need to stop that. Traditionally, either through email, maybe some markups, perhaps even we get some PDFs into the mix. The real challenge that comes through this correspondence is that the emails and those PDFs, they're not linked to that actual issue. Um, we're not discussing where this is. It's not synced to the actual model that we're working on. So there's really no direct connection between the correspondence that we're giving and the true single source or issue that we're trying to have the correspondence about. So this really means that the information that we receive, say, via PDF, that we really could use inside of, say, Revit to track down an issue becomes much harder 
to validate, and it makes it much harder to sort of rinse and repeat and do all of that over and over again. So there has to be a better way. That's where BIM track comes in. So now when we're using BIM track is that center location where we keep all of their information, we have the ability to start taking this information out of the silos and start sharing it. So say for example, we've got the BIM manager, the coordinator, they start validating the information with clash detections and a clash detection port, maybe even visual validation through saved viewports. Then they need to be able to spread that information out. So they take that information and they share it with the rest of the team. The rest of the team can then validate it, whether that be the engineer, the project manager, the architect, even the general trades, to make sure they've got that information. And we understand that getting all of those people together might be like herding cats, but again, that's what that single source of truth comes into play. So now we can take that information, those issues that we've created in our authoring tool or our viewing tool of choice, and we can pass those on to the people that are going to be the boots in the ground actually making those changes inside of their natural authoring environment. Say you're in a, a modeler working inside of Revit, you have three or four or 10 issues that you need to address. We're able to take advantage of this information that's been shared with us directly in our authoring platform, make those changes, and then carry on with our work. We don't have to reinvent our workflow. We're just improving our workflow. We're making it more efficient as we're working inside of our tool of choice. So now let's go and take a look at what we can do with the product. All right, so here we are in the BIMTrack hub in the web app. And as you can see, I currently have access to 11 projects. Now, we get unlimited projects with a BIM track hub. So there could be 100 projects inside of this hub, and I see the 11 that I have access to. I'm an admin in this particular hub. So you can see I have access to the hub settings. But generally, we are just going to access the general menu. So I'm going to quickly hop into our demo project here, this small car dealership. Once I click on this, it takes us directly to the dashboard where we see everything that's kind of happened in the last 90 days. Of course, we can choose the range we want to look at. We have the nice little uh, mountaintop here to see when people have been active or not active in our project. And of course, our issues. If we hop over into the issue part of the dashboard, you can see we have access to all of the current and live issues. We have the ability to quickly type in an issue number or name and this can take us directly to that issue. Inside here, we see all the information that is stored inside of an issue. If I hover over the viewpoint, it gives us some valuable information. You can see it was created inside of our BIMTrack 3D viewer. It also gives us an X, Y, and Z coordinate. This is the secret sauce to working inside of BIMTrack, that shared coordinate experience. So whether we're reviewing a model inside of Revit, Navisworks, Tecla, Civil 3D, or in the BIMTrack viewer, as long as we're all using that same coordinate system, when we say, take us to this part of the model, we all see the same information. We also have the ability here to see any comments. So in this particular issue, you can see the comments that have all been made. We can at somebody in here so we can make sure that everyone that needs to be involved in the comment string is in fact involved. We have the ability to add attachments. Just like we have unlimited projects, we have unlimited storage. So somebody's attached the steel spec PDF. And of course, the ongoing history of this entire project. Now, you might not always know the exact issue that you're searching for. So we also have the ability to use filters, all of these different criteria. So perhaps we want to see just the discipline of mechanical. I hit apply and we see just those issues. We can also save some of these as quick filters. So we have access to these issues right away. So if I select architectural top issues, it's going to show me the issues now. There's just eight that are related to the architectural discipline and from critical first and then all of our high issues. So we can really slice and dice the issues as we see fit. So let's quickly hop inside of Navisworks. So if I pop up inside of Navisworks here, we can see again our little car dealership. We also see all these lovely balloons sort of floating in space. These allow us to know visually where there's some issues. 
So if I were to hover over this one here, we can see it's that same issue we saw earlier about the wrong header. If I click on this, it takes me directly to that location here inside of my federated Navisworks model. Now, of course, it's really great to have our add-in here for Navisworks and our add-ins look the same in all of our seven uh, add-in products, but we also might need to create an issue inside of that. So I'm gonna just quickly turn off my little viewpoints here and perhaps we need to create an issue. So I'm gonna just zoom in to this car sign. I'm gonna use my create an issue and I'm gonna quickly say, we need to change this, change sign. I can do a quick markup using my tool and just let them know that this is what needs to be changed. I can even have a quick arrow just to draw attention to it. I hit save, close, and now that information is shared inside of here. The real of information here is the fact that we can add accountability. So I assign this to Bob the Builder, I assign a priority, the zone that I want it to be, add in some discipline information, due date, and then of course we've got any notification, which is like a CC on an email. So I'm gonna CC the team, issue, status, coordination, and then of course the confidentiality. Confidentiality allows us the ability to decide who sees the issue and who doesn't. Whether that's a privacy issue or we just don't wanna clutter up somebody else's issue box with issues that aren't relevant to them. So in this case, I'm gonna include the architectural team and the construction team. And then I say publish. And now we have this new issue being pushed out and is now available for everyone to see. Of course, one of the big things with Navisworks is the ability to create issues by clashes, and we can do that as well. So whether it's taking clash data and bulk creating issues from that, or whether it's through viewpoints and taking that visual inspection information and creating issues, we can do that directly here inside of the tool of choice. What if we want to correct some of that information? So if I hop quickly here inside of Revit, and now perhaps you want to see the idea of correcting an issue. So I'm signed in as the engineer. I'm going to go to my filters. I'm going to choose my architectural top issues. Say OK. And you can see that that wrong header issue has come up again. So I can go and say view and model. And it's going to take me directly to that location here inside of the structural architectural model. Now that I'm here inside of this issue, I have a pretty good idea what the problem is. This header is too small. I can always hit the edit view and I can see all of the information in the comments just to validate that I was correct with my assumption. But the real key thing about being able to stay here inside of my workflow and not have to go to a different location to find this issue is that I can now correct this. So I simply select this beam here inside the view. I see it's a 12 by 16. I select the issue that needs to be corrected. So I select my header. I make it a 12 W 12 by 16. I've now corrected this issue. I can say view and edit, take a screenshot just to validate what I've done. I type in uh, what I've done fixed with W12 by 16 header. I say post. And most importantly, I take the status from in progress to ready to review fixed. Now you may have noticed that I didn't have the ability to close that issue. This is a workflow that we highly recommend that only certain people have the ability to close issues. This way that there's always that second set of eyes to validate that the solution proposed is the right solution for this project. There could be multiple solutions, but we wanna make sure the one that we're sharing for it is possible. So therefore the BIM coordinator, the project lead would have the ability to close this issue. Maybe on Fridays they run a report and they say, okay, here are all the ready to review issues. They validate that they're correct and if they're good, they'll close them. If another solution is required, they can reopen that status and send it back out to the team. Then I simply hit publish. Now this issue has been validated. You can see in here that it now says ready for review fixed and we've added that extra viewpoint. 
if I hop back into the Revit environment and I go back into this issue, the header one, you can see that it now says that it is ready for review fixed. And you'll also see that we now have that additional information. It tells me here and it says that it's been fixed. So I can just come in here and say, okay, I'm now logged in as Carl and I have the ability. I can close this issue. All good, closed, post. And then I just needed to hit the save button here. Closed, save, and now we've closed that issue. And of course, we also have the ability to get into metrics and reports. So if we click on the reports, we have the ability to get a report ready for our coordination meeting. We have templates very similar to our quick filters for issues. Let's go to our overdue issues. I can then say print. It's going to bring us to a web portal. It's also going to ask us if we want to do an actual print. I'm going to cancel out of here. All of this is live information. You can see all of the data and this is configurable. So if there's information you don't want in the report, you can turn it off. But we can also see that it gives us all of the information from the issue, any additional pictures that have been added. Perhaps there's been a PDF added, an image of the PDF to give us context. Everything we need is available to us in one easy spot. My favorite part is it's also clickable. So if I click on this, it's going to take me directly to that issue in the platform. I can now action it. And if we happen to be working from a PDF version, we also have the ability to click on that link and it takes us to the web site and we can action that issue. So now during the coordination meeting, we're not spending time coordinating the meeting. We can get directly into the information that we need and make sure that we have all the things that need to get addressed during that meeting addressed in a timely manner. And I think that's where I'll end my overview of the BIM track ever interface and all that we can do with BIM track. And I'm going to now pass it over to Robert. Thanks, Carl. So now let's discuss our new integration and partnership with BIMTRAC. Our goal is to provide customers with the proper tools to enable making your laser scans part of your BIM coordination and issue tracking processes. By providing this integration, you can now extend the capability of our visual analysis tools in Sintu Cloud by analyzing the scan data versus the BIM model and create notes or issues that are directly connected to your BIMTRAC project. We give you the option to either push or sync these notes and issues with your BIM track project to enable global tracking and BIM project coordination. You have the flexibility to update, comment, or assign these notes and issues as needed. Step one is to connect your Sintu Cloud account to your BIM track hub. You will need to get your BIM track token for the selected BIM track hub from your BIM track account manager. You will then add this token to your Sintu Cloud account. You will need to be a Sintu Cloud Administrator or Co-Administrator. Next to the Administrator tab, you will see a new tab for integrations. You will click on this and insert your, the token that you receive from your BIM Track Manager. After you've connected your Sintu Cloud account to your BIM Track Hub, the next step is to connect your Sintu project to your BIM Track project. This will most be likely done at the project level within Sintu. When inside of a project in Sintu Cloud, you may go to the Reports tab and click on the Link Project button. This will bring up the pop-up box asking you to select which BIM Track Hub, in some cases you may have multiple, and which BIM Track project to connect to. So let's go ahead and show this, this integration in product. Uh, so as you notice, here I am in uh, BIM Track. And I have a project selected, so it's true point five one seven two six. If I go into my uh, Sintu application, uh, you'll notice over here we have added an integrations tab. So what I'm going to do is add a BIM track token. Uh, what you'll need to do is get the BIM track token from your BIM track hub administrator. Uh, so once they can either do that themselves or they can uh, email that to you. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the token here and hit submit. And after you hit submit, it's going to ask you a couple questions. So the first thing to notice is there's this create user section. 
If you select yes, this means that if if you are a Send to user and you do not have an existing uh, account inside of BIMTRAC, this will create that user for you. This is for those customers who have a BIMTRAC enterprise with, with pretty much unlimited users. Um, you can also select no, so if you have a limited number of users that you can have to your BIMTRAC account, you can select no and it will not add the Send to user to your BIMTRAC hub. The other option we have here is for push or sync. So when we push, we actually push the issue from Send2 to, to BIMTRAC, and from there, BIMTRAC serves as the master, meaning that that is the application that will manage all the different statuses and next steps for those issues. If you select sync, sync means that you can either do it inside of BIMTRAC or Send2, meaning you can go and change the status of an issue in either application. Uh, we also give you the option to do that, select this uh, type of push or sync at the project level, which is what I believe most people will do. So I'm going to go ahead and hit submit here. After you see, after I've done that, you will now notice that uh, it shows the BIMTRAC hub that we're connected to. So I've connected to our Send2 hub inside of BIMTRAC different projects we've already connected in the past. Uh, but this also is a good way just to kind of show to make sure you're connected to the right hub. You could have multiple hubs if you wanted. Uh, so from there, let's go into my projects. And we're going to use this TruePoint product, uh, project. And I would like to give a special thanks to TruePoint Laser Scanning who uh, gave us this data, step, data set to use for this, uh, for this demonstration. So I'm going to go ahead and open this project. And I'm going to go ahead and create an issue. So if I go into my 3D view, and let's go ahead and run a, a visual analysis. So I'm going to go into this area down here. Uh, I'm going to select on this scan position. So this is the 2D panoramic view. Uh, this will give us the surface view. And this is showing us both the BIM model as well as the scan data. So let's go ahead and do a comparison. And I want to compare all the scans to all the models. And when I click on this visual difference tool, this will allow me to select, you know, the, the tolerance that I'm looking for. So let's just do, you know, 0.16 feet. And everything shown in red means that that is out of tolerance. Everything in green means that it matches the BIM model to this tolerance. Uh, so if I look around here, I'm going to notice there's a door here. And I really want to kind of check this a little closer just to make sure. So I'm going to hit this visual check tool. And if I slide it to the left, this will show me the scans that were collected out in the field. And this, if I slide it to the right, will show me my, my BIM model. And I notice that this door that we collected out in the field is not represented inside of the BIM model. So I'm going to go ahead back to this visual check tool. I'm going to close it, and I'm going to create an issue. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the Annotations tab. I'm going to add an annotation. And I'm going to select on this door here. And I'm going to make this, like I said, an issue. Uh, so when I select on the issue, I'm going to give it a title. So I'm going to say um, add to BIM model. I'm going to give it a severity level. So I'm going to say this is critical. Uh, I'm going to give it a due date. So let's give it the, the 29th. Uh, I can put in some text here. Please add to the model. I can also attach uh, a picture. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to choose a picture that I've already saved. So let's go here to my D drive and select this picture here. And this picture thumbnail is shown up in there. I'm going to assign it to someone. So I'm going to assign this to Dominique. And I'm going to hit validate. So Dominique is already in this project. So that's what it's validating it against. And I'm going to go ahead and create this annotation. And what it's going to do is create an issue for me, which is shown right here. Uh, so let's go ahead and get out of this. And let's go ahead and put our settings back there. So now that I've created that issue, what I want to do is go into my Reports tab. And you'll see here's the, the issue that we just created, uh, along with that, that attachment. So I want to link this to, to BIMTRAC. So I hit this link project. I'm going to select on that. And it's going to ask me, what is the BIM track hub? It is sent to what is the project. 
So it's actually this true point project. And so now I have some options that, that I mentioned before. Um, we can allow uh, us to create users inside of BIMTRAC. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and select no. I, I don't want to add uh, new people to BIMTRAC project. For the push sync option, I'm actually going to select the sync, meaning that I can change the um, I can change the status of the uh, issue at, at in either application. So I'm going to go ahead and hit submit here. And now you'll see that we have this BIM track. It shows the project up here. Uh, it shows kind of grayed out that we need to, for this issue we created, add to the BIM model. So I need to link that. So I'm just going to hit the link selected button. And you notice it starts pulsating. Uh, once it's finished pulsating, it'll turn to a solid color, and that means that it has been updated inside of BIMTRAC. So it's, as you can see, it shows that uh, it has been synced. So I am going to go back to my BIMTRAC. I'm just going to refresh my issues, and here is that issue that, uh, that we just did. Now when I click on this issue, you'll notice that a lot of the information from Sin2 matched over. Uh, such as the title, the thumbnail, any comments or attachments. Uh, here's an example of the attachment that I added. Uh, priority, due date, who it's assigned to. So it was assigned to Dominique. Here's the due date. Uh, type of issue, the priority was critical. All that information is mapped over. What is, I believe, is truly unique is we can actually select on this description and copy and paste. So if I'm a member of this project inside of Send2, I can copy and paste this URL. Just go open a new tab and hit paste and go. And this will bring us to that exact location inside of Sentu, just so you can have a little bit more clarity of what's going on. Uh, so I could go ahead and just change, you know, maybe I want to change it to a surface mode. So we can actually go in and we could add a new comment if we wanted to. Uh, this is being looked at and hit reply and once again if I go back into BIMTRAC uh, this should sync so if I hit refresh you'll see here it is it's already been updated this is being looked at so let's go ahead and continue our workflow to resolve an issue I want to go back to this issue and I'm going to click the play in 3D and what I would like to do now is export this information out into a useful format such as a point cloud or a mesh. So in order to do that, I'm going to go back into my project. I'm going to go into our surface mode because that gives us the best uh, view of our mesh. I'm also going to go and turn off our BIM model. So all we're getting is, is the actual as-built data that we collected out in the field. Uh, I already have a crop created, so I'm going to go ahead and go to that and just to kind of show you how this works. So this is our crop that we've created called Crop1. Uh, but just to show you how our crop tool works, basically it's an X, X Y, and Z uh, slider bar. So basically by gripping these, we can move you know, our Z axis up and down to capture the information we want. Same thing with the Y axis, also with the, the X axis. So. Uh, Really easy tool to use. Once you hit add, it saves it as a crop over here, and then you can go in and rename it. So, uh, like I said, I already had a crop that I had already created earlier. We called it add door. So with this information, with this crop, we now have the possibility of exporting the information out. Uh, the first way to do so would be to export it out as a recap file. So recap is the point cloud file that we can bring directly into Revit Navisworks AutoCAD. Uh, so basically all you're doing is selecting RCP and you're going to give it the destination folder and the name you want to give it and hit export. Um, so that's one way. That'll help get you out the point cloud. Another thing that we give you the option to do is to be able to export a, a unified mesh. So in order to do that, we're going to create a mesh. Uh, very simple tool. What I'm going to do is give it a name. I'm also going to select a format that I want, FBX, OBJ, or STL. Uh, the one that I did was actually an FBX. And then up here we have uh, a slider bar that we can move back and forth. And the more you move it to the less, the, the higher the resolution. 
Uh, for this example, actually I went with a very high resolution, which is 0.1 inches, just because I'm dealing with such a small area. Now, if you were doing something like a large room or the floor of a building, you would definitely want to move this up a, a little higher. Uh, the reason being is your triangulation will be so dense at a low resolution that it can it could probably cripple your your design software. So it could be you could actually get a mesh out of here that's two gigabytes to ten gigabytes, which would basically crash your computer. So you have to be cognizant of what you're using your mesh for. Uh, once you got your settings correct, you just hit create and you will get a pop-up that says that your mesh is being processed up in the cloud and you will receive an email once it is completed. So now let's see how we would use these export formats in our workflow. In Navisworks, um, this is that model area. Go ahead and close this. And I want to open BIMTRAC. I'm going to select my hub and my project and you'll notice here is that that issue that we created so it's all linked together I'm going to go view in the model and there's that location and as you can see I've already brought in the FBX as a mesh so let me hide that real quick just to show you so this is the location where it was BIMTRAC has brought us to this location to show it uh, like I said I just appended and added this FBX uh, to it and this is that area so, uh, you know, it kind of shows us inside of, of Navisworks what we're looking at, where that area needs to be corrected. We can also uh, look at this inside of Revit. So the first thing we want to do is insert that point cloud that we had created from within Sintu. So I'm going to go to my point cloud. Um, you'll see here that this is the point cloud that we had created, and we're using shared coordinates, so it pops in there very nicely. Uh, what I also want to do is go ahead and log in to my BIMTRAC plugin. So we'll do that real quick. And once we do that, we will select our hub and our project. And let's go ahead and view this inside of the model. So as you can see, here is our point cloud. And uh, like I said, this door was missing. So let's say we want to go ahead and just add a new door to kind of close this out. So let's go... Uh, insert a door. We're going to use this door passage single and it fits in there. So uh, we've added the door and once we have done that we can then go maybe edit this this issue and we're going to change it to uh, this has been closed. Let's go ahead and publish that. So that has now been synced up inside of BIMTRAC. So let's go back to BIMTRAC. And if we go and refresh this, this should be set to closed. And there you see it. So now, so that's just a, a very simple way of showing you how the workflow using Sintu and BIMTRAC can, uh, you know, can help you close out a lot of your issues you have on your projects. So from here, we would like to thank you for your time today on the webinar. We do have a few minutes left for some Q&A, so we're going to review uh, some of the questions that came in during the presentation.